Hey everyone, it's Calvin, also known as Omer, and this is The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and once again, they change the scene depending on where you are, and I definitely believe that it's, I think it's just like, where you are literally in the story at that time. Man, like, I think that's just a really nice touch. That's just a really nice touch. Oh, we have to talk to this big boy as well. Hey, big boy, what about the first class cabin area? Um, Mr. Stroganoff, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in the finest part of Warrior Steamship. Very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens, traveling secret. Many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. But well, somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw you in the ocean, but Stroganoff is not an animal. Well, thank God you're not an animal, Mr. Stroganoff. Uh, thank you? If I may, I was wondering, is the cabin next to Mr. Asagai's uh, currently occupied? Duh. Hmm. Suzada-san, do you understand that? It sounded like, da. I think it's probably Russian for yes or no. It's probably Leon. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without the invitation. Well, it sounds like there's somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Wow. Passenger in next door cabin. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asa, guys? If you don't, it's very, very, very silly. His name is Mr. Grimes. Oh, they, they, they proved me wrong. I thought they were going to do the whole, like, that's classified. Game, you are incredible. His name is Mr. Grimesby Royalot. He is very important Western gentleman. A Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Royalot is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East Islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us Mr. Roylet came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks- Oh, sorry. <laughs> I keep messing that up. All the damn time. Come to think of it. We've been at sea for two weeks now, and I've been in Cosmos Cabin the entire time. I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin, or even like it felt like anyone was there. Well, presumably since the gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins. He must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Yeah, that part is not our business. We don't need to know his job or anything until he's framed for murder. Last night. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganoff? Seaman? Duh, all the time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is a sad about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course! And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Yet. <laughs> or yes. Is it no it does, yes. What is what's the what's that one then? I think it doesn't exist, that's what. The language is made up. It was clearly a... Uh, no. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. I didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way. I said no. Sorry. I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough, I cannot say more now. Oh, it is time for me to report to the captain. You must return to the cabin. Y yes, all right. Bulkhead to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain, or, as English say, when the pigs fly. 
so that's basically an expression that means when... Well, never, pretty much, yeah. Yes, I, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Uh, so let's first of all... Uh, examine. So I think the first thing we have to do is definitely go to... Or try to get into this second room here. If we can. This is it. The cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Yes. The ventilator from which cosmos san wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Knock knock. Who's in here? Who's in here now? No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inqu in inquiries. How annoying. Wait, what? What was that? It came from inside the cabin. It's a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. Mr. Sholmes. I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off their hinges. Please. Uh, wait, Mr. Sholmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch the muscular urge? What prey can I kick? I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress relief. I can understand that, you know, you build up to do something and then you're, you're not allowed to do it. Here we go, 9th of January, SS Buddha. First class cabin, number two. Oh my god. Marvelous beard. With a scissors too. Who are you? A western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We heard a woman scream. A woman? Don't be absurd. I'm trying to th like get a gauge for who this person is. Like, look at this. This is actually a really cool design. I love beards that like cover the entire face and like little red nose. It's really, really cool. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True, the old man does appear to be the only per- This old man doesn't appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? It was probably him. Get out! All of you! Now! Please excuse the intrusion, but you're Mr. Grimsy Roylet, I suppose? Yes, that's me. And you are? I'm the one and only. The actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. <laughs> I'm a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I show you, you may trust me completely. The man used that magazine like a business card. A detective? Mm, I do not trust detectives. You distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So I might be supposed to ask you to open that small traveling case? What the? Don't be stupid! How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. Don't look at me! Yeah, look at you, Rinosuke. Wait, what? Is serious? Oh my, did you see that? Are you actually serious? Is someone hiding in there? Yes, the case just shook. Leave now, otherwise I'll call the steward. So this is Cosma's neighbor, Mr. Grimsby Roylot. There's no doubt about it. The strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find clues before that burly sailor returns. Oh wow, so we get to talk to this. I love the design so much. Oh, the music's so good! Last night, my friend! Mr. Rolot, we'd like to ask you, uh, talk to you about something. No. Oh! I do not want to talk. Leave my cabin now! Uh, this is going terribly. We're not getting anywhere here. I agree, but there may be someone else who can help. Who? <laughs> Get out of the closet! Wait. Wait. Uh, perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roulette. He's just sitting in the closet. 
Mr. Wallat, uh, we'd like to talk to you about something. No, oh, so we have to talk to him? Okay, we have to talk to the detective. What if we keep talking to him and see, since it's ticking off everything? Yeah, but maybe it'll trigger something. So we actually have to examine him in the closet before we can talk to him. Okay, let's examine the whole place then. Let's do it. First of all, there's a teapot. Oh my god, he's not letting us do anything! This is my cabin. Get out! Could we just have a quick look inside your traveling case, perhaps? No. What a pity. I think we're out of luck. I think you're right. There doesn't appear to be anything more we can do. I agree, but there may be someone else who can help. Yeah, like, I. how about we just, like, beat him up? If you just beat people up, you know, it works out. Always. Do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe while I was waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great power of detection into service. Oh, and it seems the hour is upon us now. The time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Rolot, is clearly trying to hide something. And you know what that most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? What is it? Why, the truth, of course. Though it be, should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for Russians. Thank you, yeah. Like, um, it was actually a really big deal. Uh, and it is, you know, was the Russian, you know, like, scaring people with the idea of, like, Russia as an enemy. And, like, they, you know, every once in a while you need, like, a new enemy, I think, as well to, like... Well, you don't need one. But some people need one if they want people away from their flags and agreeing to like, you know, just like follow someone blindly is an enemy. And for years it was like, you know, those Russians are going to get us if we don't do this. And the Russians might have been doing stuff bad. But uh, in some cases they were just like, hey, we're just trying to live over here too. Uh, of course, now it's a completely different situation. Uh, we can, you know, we could talk about that at length, but I don't think that's, there's time. Uh, though she'll be pointing out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Can you imagine how the how the Russian will react when the secret he guards so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? I would. Oh yes, please. Well then, what you're about to see may well astound you. For I'm about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to this case. Could this man be a more hackneyed, hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? Wait, so like it's a portrayal, so he's actually American portraying himself as a Russian. From time to time it, occur, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness or Russian on account of his dubiousness? Dubiousness. Dubiousness, they dubiousness. I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you or anyone. That's right. And Mr. Sholmes? I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Shh. I must have complete silence. What are you doing? Why are you peering at me like that? Ah. Just as I thought. Yes, I've quite made up my mind now. Hmm? There can be no other explanation for that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I've reached two introvertible conclusions. Incontrovertible intro conclusions. Sorry, I, I forgot how British I was for a second. What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity. Is that of a villain. Using those shears, you're about to end the existence of something most dear. Are you not? Huh? <laughs> Hiding the scissors then? 
And number two, the other conclusion I've drawn, you are at this very moment lies in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers and with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. I'm wondering, is this just a fake beard or whatever? Or something along those lines, like is it a girl maybe as well? Does it not? Oh! Oh, Naruto, I never imagined I'd witness uh, one of Mr. Shum's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. What? One ineffable uh, twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventure of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction firsthand. It's like a dream come true. I can hardly believe but all the color is drained from Royalette's face. It looks like somehow both Sholmes, Mr. Sholmes' conclusion were right. How? H how could you? How could I possibly know such things? You wish to say? Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon this journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. But plainly, let us work through my deductions together. There's an actual, like, deduction sheet? Old man's identity. The do dubious looking Russian- Oh, this is actually a cool way of doing it as well, though. Like, I know this is just probably for him, but... The dubious looking Russian, Mr. Roulette, obviously what catches the eye in the first place. The beard, the glasses. I guess the shears too, but the beard is magnificent. I've never been a big fan of beards, though, I'll be honest. Uh, like, I remember when I was a teenager, like, we were- I grew a beard. And people used to be like, man, how could you grow a beard, man? I'm just like, dude, like, this just happens on my face. <laughs> this just happens. And now I don't like having a beard at all. Now he asks us, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring at us in the face. You are on the verge of using your shears to cut away the copious beard, you sport. Now, moving on. Oh, that was neat. This is actually a really neat presentation. The question that begged is, why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Royalot? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper. In particular, the fascinating front page article. Which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Royalot. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. So you're the revolutionary. No. Very different de character design. In translation, the headline reads, Revolutionary Vilain Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of this article possesses an extremely copious beard. I love the presentation, but I just don't, I don't agree with it. I think it's a different stance even, like different like way of standing, different body type, everything. Having noted the article yourself, you decide to remove your incriminating facial hair before you g give you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome revolutionary himself, William Borshevik. Not that I've heard of you, you myself, you understand. Wrongdoing. What's his wrongdoing? Being a revolutionary? Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. Why not? Let why not speak? And the proof of this crime over there. Oh, yes, Mr. Roylet. Taken unawares, people have a prosp uh, propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. And I assure you, you the eyes you speak the eyes speak much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the ferret of glance falls. The proof of your crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that travelling case. It is time I think that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. Uh, no, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young lady perhaps, 
one slice enough to fit therein. Here's the thing, right? I'm totally for, you know, uh, if he did do some, like, murder, like, catching this guy. If he did do some grievous crime catching this guy. But you still have to go through the proper channels and you still have to go through the proper agreements to, like, be able to open someone's private property. Like, I still, you know, I'm all for, like, a lot. I do not like the invasion of privacy at all. It's not, it's something I'm 100% against. Uh, I think it's going to be something that will happen eventually. And I think it's already happening in most cases, but I think it's going to get so normalized that, like, we're literally going to have, like, our laptops be, like, you know, scanned, like, in a hundred years' time, just, like, constantly. Uh, which can be a good thing because you're going to find a lot of criminals. But it could be a bad thing as well because then Darlene's going to find out that you have not been paying the electric bill. You know, it's all this stuff. Don't be a sword. And what? Pray, what do you, would you identify this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup do well betrays you. Once again, we need to only follow your figurative glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found in the pages of the newspaper. For well, there is another, most stimulating article. If we turn from fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Whoa. Renowned prima ballerina, the Novovich Ballet, disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us but to one conclusion. You think she's in there? I can read this headline. Leon, ultimate baseball player, dies. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Yeah, so Nikolina Pavlova. Nikol Nikolina, that's how you say Nikolina. Nikolina is with an E at the end, and it's both really lovely names as well. Nikolina's more Dutch, I think, though. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. It's kind of cool the way they presented this. I don't think all of it's going to be right. I think it's, like, too good to be true that we found this, like, right away. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the Russian enigma, Elementsky. That means ele elemental, I suppose. Cesar-san, that wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholmes' brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Just standing over there with those other- Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? Really cool outfit. Are we gonna say, like... Pray, what can I do for you? He's just so- He is such, like, a Lockhart-type thing character. It's about your deductions. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Ah, yes, I recall a discussion earlier at the time. I believe I told you that the man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Jones, Mr. Roylight does look more like this man to, uh, than you do. That's not the point. Another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it's too small, clearly, but what's in there that's like an animal? You'd like to even fit a five-year-old child in that case, even if you pushed really hard. <laughs> you, do you have experience with this? I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. I said she was pretty. Clearly, I made an indication that she was pretty. I didn't know she was 15. Let's move on from that. I know people are going to be like, hey, come on, just... I had no idea. No idea whatsoever, okay? Obviously, like, if she's 15, we say, hey, we move on, and we never talk about her again. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't know the ages of characters in animes, okay? And when you realize that they are younger, you say, okay, listen, I'm leaving. Hey, good day to you. Have a lovely life, okay? That's what you do. It's just a drawing, Calvin. Yeah, and the people who say, like, it's just a drawing are the same people that, like, a week later are like, This is the greatest anime of all time because it means the world to me. The characters are so real. Uh, no, I didn't know. Uh, how could I? Hmm. 
Well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out of the gaze. <laughs> That's a good way of doing math. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain light uh, litness in the body. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into confines of that small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in this circus, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Ah! Mr. Nudo, something. Oh, sorry, Mr. Nudo, something's occurred to me uh, about uh, Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think the powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and, and his logic that seems a little off. Your idea of a little may be a, a little off itself, Mr. Zotto. It's just one or two key words in his deduction that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for the alternatives. What do you think? Hmm, switch some key words in his deductions? Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Shulman's great deduction. Here's the thing, right? It's not genius. You're not a genius detective if someone else has to decipher your clues. You know what I mean? Precisely thought I was going through my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. Ha 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 ha. It's not that funny. And you may, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? <gasps> Wait. Where are your handcuffs? What happened here? How did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me. Oh, I love Herlock Sholmes, my boy. High five, boy. Thank you so much. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrist when we are finished. How about no? I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. This is really neat. A revolutionary on the run. Okay, so we have to switch the words out. Is that what we have to do? So, the dubious looking Russian Merlite, obviously, what catches die in the first place. Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now we ask ourselves. What could possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using these shears to cut away a copious beard you sport. So that's... Not right. Hmm. I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roulette either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word here, Naruto-san, and see if it helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a longer look at Mr. Roulette. I wonder if it's really his beard that he intend to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the, Mr. the, the sense of Mr. Shonen's deduction better, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruto san Why am I the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could use to switch around the last sentence. What exactly is Mr. Rath going to use on his normal shears for? So we can, like, look at. Oh, we can look all around this boy. What's this? We can only look up the, the, the top half, though? Wait a second. What is this? Golden locks? What the. What's this? It looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, no, no. The colors is not the point. The point is, what is it doing in the back of Mr. Wallet's head? And how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true. So it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Yes. There we go. The golden locks. I knew it. That's kind of cool. This is a really cool mechanic. Oh, look at us. Oh, my God. Look at us, handsome man. Look at the handsome man we are. That is absolutely beautiful. You're on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed. You've identified the precise detail I was intending to expose, but you didn't expose it, so get away from me. Such lush golden hair suddenly does not befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. 
And judging from the length of the sheen of your hair, one still very much in her youth. Wait, are you the ballerina? If only I'd managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question then begged is, why would you decide to rid yourself of this magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolution. So it's the article about the... the, the she, she is the ballerina. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea the old man was really a young woman in disguise. Did you? I did. Very, very early. What? What are you staring at me like that for? Yeah, it was a surprise, Naruto-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room deducing f the facts of Mr. Sholmes. I understand what we agreed. I'm not having fun or anything. This is strictly business, not... Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts all at all now. No, that's true. Given that Mr. Oda is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or rather she, can't possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Yeah, we got this. We got this. I know what it is. I know what we gotta do. Alright. I'll do my best. We know what to do here. We got this, uh... Hey, where is the... We switched the... Hey, where is it? Hey... Oh, we can examine it. Here we are. Hmm. This is interesting. Have you found something relevant, naruto son? Well, no. I mean, it looks like it might be interesting. I can't read a single word, I'm afraid. No, nor can I, but look at this picture. I would have actually, like, actually killed this person for cutting off this beautiful hair. Perhaps it's about a beautiful young Russian princess, don't you think? She is very pretty, isn't she? I suppose you enjoy articles like this, do you? I, I don't know. I can't make any sense of it. Ah, oh, I'm glad you know this is article. Aha! Allow me to give you a short summary of its contents. Oh, uh, thank you. He pops up everyone, this Mr. Sholmes. It's about the disappearance of a young lady last night. Renowned Purima ballerina, the Novovich Ballet, disappears from Shanghai. During a performance in Shanghai, the famous dancer was reported missing. She is, of course, the talented young Nikolina Pavlova. Why are Russian names so hard to remember? It would appear the woman was in a costume when she was found to be missing from her dressing room. Where in the diamond tiara you see pictured, which is worth some 20,000 rubles? That's like, that's like 10,000 more than 10,000 rubles. This is crazy. How much is 20,000 rubles? I had the same question for me, but the <laughs> same question for me. I have no idea, but I'm quite sure. It must be an unbelievable sum of money. Suzada-san's eyes are shining like diamonds themselves. The tiara is the property of Novelich Ballet. It would seem the directors beside herself will worry. Yes, I'm not surprised. The company is most anxious to recover both Miss Pavlova and the valuable tiara. They've requested international assistance at all ports with sailing to Great Britain. Could this be another case of Russian fleeing from his or her country? It does seem to be the Russian thing to do. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response, Mr. Nuruhudo. So that's what we have to do. The article about the ballerina is the one we have to uh, work on here. And that's going to be fine. That's actually what we're going to do in the next episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, really, we're getting into like a midterm break now for school, so I'm going to be able to record a little bit longer episodes for a little bit while, then we're going to have to get back into recording. It's just the way things go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon.